Hey everyone, I'm back again to update you on my life in China. So I've been here for about two months and I gotta say life in Lee County just keeps getting better and better. So Lee County only has about 30,000 people and it's super interesting to see how modern Western culture really clashes with the old school traditional farming values that people have here. I'll see people driving old tractors from like the 1980s, but at the same time they'll have the newest iPhone 6. At times I do feel a little bit bored because the town is so small, but I still continue to find these random heartwarming occurrences. And seeing camel rides all around me in a town with 30,000 people all remind me that Li Shen is just filled with rich culture. The food is nothing short of fantastic. Gotta love all that spiciness, yo! So first, the mid-autumn festival occurred around the end of September. It's essentially a festival where people gather with their family, pray, and give thanks for the life that they have. During the holiday, I stayed in Li Shen and I spent some time with my students. They of course treated me to a delicious meal and we explored around the town and ate mooncakes, which are super famous in Changde. I also spent some time with grade 2 students who took me to my first KTV here in Li Shen and we jammed out to some awesome Korean pop music. Then on October 1st, we all celebrated the National Day holiday. It's a holiday that celebrates the anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Most people have off from work and I heard that traveling gets really crazy here in China. So I went to a place close by, it's about two hours away, called Zhang Jiajie. This was a place that I've always wanted to visit ever since I saw the Avatar film. They filmed most of the movie there at Zhang Jiajie and it's famous for its quote-unquote floating rocks. I met up with a few friends of mine from across China. Shout out to you guys in Nan Jing in Changzhou and we had a super super awesome time. I don't think my trip would have been as enjoyable without them. Zhang Jiajie is absolutely magnificent. It's a massive park with surprises at every turn. First, we hiked around Huangshi village. We began by getting a cable car ride up to the top which gave us a really awesome view of the whole park. While there, I was awestruck by the mountains, the beautiful scenery, the echo wall. Hello! <laughs> And of course, the monkeys, which were super friendly but also mischievous. We then hiked around Zhang Jiajie Grand Canyon, hoping to be able to walk across the glass bridge. It turned out to be close for repairs, but that's okay. The walk that we took through the Grand Canyon definitely made up for it. All over the Grand Canyon are these amazing waterfalls and picturesque green sceneries. You definitely get a feel of the idea of the old China versus new China. You can still see how people interact with nature as they bathe and wash their pots and pans in the river. I also learned about the Tujia people, who are a minority group in China. They are super famous for their colorful clothing and their wooden style architecture. We boarded these amazing handcrafted Tujia style boats that took us all through the river valleys of Zhang Jiajie Grand Canyon. I don't think it's a view I'll ever forget. It was probably my most favorite experience while at Zhang Jiajie. We also visited Old Chibu Street. It's a small town with lots of restaurants, shops, and bars. It's situated right on a river, so it definitely has this old school Chinese traditional kind of feel to it. And the Tujia architecture is unlike anything I've seen before. I felt like I stepped into a scene of Hayao Miyazaki spirited away. It was really cool to see people making ginger candy from scratch or seeing people brewing their own baiju. Obviously we had to have a taste. One of my most favorite parts of Chibu Street is just how it lights up at night. There's so many colors that just pop and really appeal to the eye. While there, I also visited my first tea shop. I had some delicious black tea and learned just how intricate sipping tea can be. The man pouring the tea was just as excited to see foreigners as we were to drink the tea. I also visited Changsha again and met up with a good friend of mine. I visited a haunted house, had some delicious food, noticed a small child piloting a Gundam, and of course watched the fireworks over the island. My last set of adventures of this month culminated in the school sports meeting. During that time, the students compete in various physical activities such as relay races, high jumping, ball bouncing, and badminton. Teachers got involved too and it was really great to see just how competitive my boss gets. Now the best part about the sports meeting were the opening ceremonies. Each class in the school gets to march in to the track field 
and perform their own unique show. Students really went all out and they spent a lot of time and money on their costumes and their performances. I joined class 24. I practiced with them for about one week and I even got the chance to do my own little dance in their performance. Afterwards, I spent some time with one of my students, Eric. His family invited me over to have dinner. After a delicious meal, he taught me how to play League of Legends, which I always wanted to learn. And then he let me rock out on his drum set, which I haven't done since New York, so it was super nostalgic. I absolutely love my students more and more every day. They're all still super excited to have a foreign teacher, and word on campus is definitely spreading. I taught them about foreign cultures, traveling, and with it being the end of October, I also taught them about Halloween. I showed the students The Nightmare Before Christmas and also some Goosebumps short films. One of the best parts was I even got to try out my new costume in class. So lastly, how has the language barrier been? I've been getting a lot of help from students and some of the English teachers on campus, but a majority of the learning has really been on my own. I know enough Chinese to order food at a restaurant or ask where something is. And I also know how to say which are the magic words that save me every day and translate to I only speak a little Chinese. So overall I have to say October has been a really exciting and fun month. I've learned a lot and I'm definitely excited for what's to come. I'll post another video up next month. As usual, love you guys. Peace!